Here we are in all its glory. How do we organise all of this stuff? Start by accepting that crafting is messy. So this is the finished result. Hello and welcome to my craft room. Today I'd like to invite you in to come along with me as I organise my desk ready to fill some pages in a journal. So this is the mess from filming my last video. I haven't moved anything, it's exactly as it was left. And it's actually pretty typical, the kind of carnage that I create when I'm putting a project together and getting that on camera. And what I want to do today is show you how I go from this mess, maybe from I don't know, filling a page in a junk journal, maybe something for junk journal January, to an organised desk, how I clear it, how I clean it, and how I then re-establish some sense of order. And that's really what I'm hoping to do today in a very realistic way, just exactly as I do it each week. And we're going to do things a little bit differently today, a bit like we did about a month ago in another Craft With Me video. So it will be sharing things I haven't shown before, quite revealing. It will be more fun and more relaxing. And that's why this is one of those videos that is part of my Craft With Me series. I will still have a tutorial component to this. So I have these process steps and tips to share with you today. But I'm hoping that today's video will really inspire you to organise your desk whilst maybe feeling that you're sitting here and crafting and relaxing along with me. So why don't we have a little nosy at what's on the desk and then we can maybe appreciate the sort of challenges that we we all have in keeping on top of our stuff and then what I'll do is I'll go through that clear, clean and organised process which I have done my usual thing and I've put it down as some steps which I hope are helpful for you. So these are the five steps and as I go through this tidy up exercise I'll try to mention as many of these tips as possible. So they're tips that are useful at each of the stages but if I don't happen to call some of them out this piece of paper is in Pinterest along with about 50 others that I produce each time I do a weekly tutorial. So hopefully that's helpful to you or indeed take a screenshot. So what do we have in this pile of papers? So I've got, I've got a snippet here that I've done in neutral colours and that's because I was making a vintage style pocket to house a best bookmakers letter. So this is a previous video. So I've, I've got a little bit here and I've got fabric on my desk. So mixed in because I was putting fabric behind the window. So what we've got is some finished projects and I'll show you how I house my finished projects. So I've tried to establish a system for that. I'll show you that a little bit later on. I've got some obviously printouts here. So there's the bookmaker's letter that I was suggesting might be useful. I've got to work out what to do and I've got to have a system that allows me to clear up a page or a desk like this pretty easily. OK, here's a confession. Do you do this? I've left the top off my glue. It's so annoying. I do that more often than I care to disclose. I've got a box of finished projects. Now these take up surface space, don't they, when we're trying to store things. I have at least got them upright in a box. So these are my little, oh, I love these, my little one page book page pockets. And I love making lots of them and they go in my junk journal, January journal. I've got, this is quite useful, a little basket. I'll, I'll mention that a bit later and a pouch there for my all. I've got a, an acrylic block there and a beautiful little stamp that I use and a paint a lot. And the reason I'm saying what these things are on my desk is one of the challenges we have is the sheer variety of things that we use. And I don't know about you, but I find it quite, it's almost stressful, isn't it? To feel the, the need to put it away and be tidy, but oh my word, how do we organize all of this stuff? I have one or two systems. I have actually got some videos on my channel sharing what I do, but 
the challenge today that we've set ourselves is to get stuff off the desk, clean it, and I'll show you exactly what to do every week that I go through. I force myself to do it so that I've got a really nice cosy desk with my twinkly lights each week to share with you. And then I will set it up so that I'm ready to do a few more pages in this. So this is the project that's underway at the moment. Junk Journal January, do join me if you feel like filling a journal. And when my desk is feeling super cosy and tidy, I feel more productive and I feel happy. So let's crack on with the clearing process. And I'll talk you through a little bit about where I put some of the items because I think that's part of what's important to share today. So now you can see the desk from the right angle and here we are in all its glory, all incredibly messy, but we're going to get on top of our desks. And if you're watching this and sitting at your desk and feeling a little bit overwhelmed, then let's just call out tip number one. In fact, a couple of tips. Start by accepting that crafting is messy. Don't get stressed. If your desk is a mess, you can start by clearing some of it. And if you can't do everything, just do a little bit and maybe next time do a bit more. So let's go for it. Some of these things are going to stay on, but a lot needs to go. Right, fabric. What I have is a little metal container underneath my desk with my most used items and offcuts. So I take a piece off a larger piece of fabric and put it in and that way I've got a variety at my fingertips and I'm not having to just cut from a larger piece that maybe I can't be bothered doing if I'm doing it in the moment. Right, that's gone. This is messy, isn't it? So snip it, always easier if it's rolled up and I do have a box to the left of me of a number of these. And this is such a fabulous project for using up little bits of scraps. And what I do with my snippet is I take a little peg and just use that to bind it, seal it so that it's a neat little circle. Get that in its box. Hello, I'm down here by the way, but you can't see me because I'm just out of the camera. I thought I'd say hello. So the next thing I think I can go at because it will make me feel good because it's quite quick is anything that's a digital on here because they're big pieces of paper or scrapbook paper. Now I have a system for digitals and I do have a video on that too if you want to get a grip of your digitals, want some inspiration then check that out. I'll leave it linked in the video description box down below. And I've also got on the desk here scrapbook paper. So what I'm starting to do is create a little bit of visibility of the desk, make yourself feel good by taking pieces of paper and putting them into the different sorts of collections that have different homes. So that's some of my dyed papers. I need to make some more of those. I use a lot of them. And I've got scrapbook paper and I've got collage paper. There's so many types. Again, I'll say it's the variety of things that I think cause us a bit of a challenge. More fabric, we can get that off, can't we? I'm already feeling better because the piles are going down. Sorting them into types, scrapbook paper, there. If I don't know where it goes, I don't stop and linger. I put it down again and come back to it. Keep the momentum going. Just grabbing all of these smaller bits and they go in my basket. Let me show you my basket. So this is featured a lot of times and it's overflowing. So what I have is at least a place to put things and then I can attack this and redivide it to where it needs to go or have a project and use some of them up. And in that little basket, it is really a, a marvel because I'm allowed to put in that all of these smaller pieces that take time to organize. So I'll put in that even larger pieces like this. So this is the Amazon scrap, 
This is the Amazon packing paper and I've daubed lovely teal and gold paint on it and I have it ready made. That's superb for going on the pages in the Junk Journal January journal. That goes in my scrappy small piece basket as well. So let's get some of those off and some of these smaller pieces. The dyed paper goes in a tub underneath my desk and I've shown that several times. So it's a tub oh, looking pretty full at the moment but I keep my scrapbook papers in there and my larger pieces of card and that works really well. I'm going to get anything that is a larger piece of scrapbook paper into a tub that's under my desk on the left hand side and that's one of the reasons I have things nearby. we well, back into small pieces so they'll go in the basket and as I'm doing things I'm already thinking what's the next thing to pick up. So my all goes in this little pouch so that I can find it, ha ha, theoretically, when I want it. Envelopes, so this eraser goes to the right of my desk and I'll show you how I make use of surfaces near to my desk as well to help me be organised on my desk. I'm getting my exercise today. Scissors, might need them for the next project but my principle is don't stop and think get it off the desk and put it away. Lovely brads. So these were, let me show you. So these are the pop vintage pockets and I put a brad on here. I've done them in a more vintage style than some of the junk mail pockets I've done before. And each of those had the bookmaker's letter in. So the idea is you can add this to your journals that you sell or you gift and it just explains to a new user what a junk journal is. So these are finished projects and we create a lot don't we and they're all different and we love them and we hoard some things but they need to go in a home as well so they will go in a wallet. I'll show you an example of a wallet in a minute. I've clearly got journals on the desk so I have a space above the desk to put these. That can go up there. So things like these finished projects, again, might come back on when I set up for my journal pages. But I'm just going to put them out of the way for the time being. Corner rounder goes in a little basket to the right. Oh, I've got, I've got finished projects here. And these are delicate and they need looking after, don't they, when we've made things and taken the time to do it. So this is an example of a bird I've made with scraps and I've used one in a page in my junk journal for junk journal January. So I did a few and they need looking after so they are also going to go in a wallet. Black gel pen, let's show you, over in my... I have a tub of pens to the right of my desk and... These are all the most commonly used colours and types. So I use a black gel pen a lot and I've got some like muted colours. The, the lovely olive and sage green in here in a brush pen. I've also got white pens. I'm doing a bit more with those. So it's upright. It doesn't take a lot of space. This is on the right hand side of my desk, but it's off the desk. So more fabric and a bit of thread. It's a, a bit of wool. And another principle I have is keep the progression going, keep the progress, don't stop. If you can't think where that goes, I'm going to put it in with the fabric and it'll get sorted, but it's off the desk. And I'm reaching the point where there's quite a few things here that need putting away. And I sometimes feel that energy decline. Do you get that? You get to the point where you've had that burst of energy and... Yeah, you just want the thing to be finished. So the final tip around this clearing process is allow yourself use of a box, which will get sorted itself later. Don't be tempted to do this too often, but let yourself pick things off the desk and put things in it. And then when you have some time on another occasion, you can then just sort the box and they don't go on the floor. 
So let's finish by putting some of these items, which will get put away, into the box. Let's see how we're going on our tips. So try to put away what you move, we talked about that. Use a box. Um, I will put finished and half finished projects into wallets and boxes. So let me have a go at showing just a couple of examples of those. So I have put the remaining items in a box because I said I think my energy was flagging and I don't want to stop and not achieve the objective of clearing the desk. And I did say I would share my wallet system. So this is an example. So I have been using these large plastic wallets to house both finished and unfinished projects. So when you have a number of items that are finished and we want to look after them, I get them very quickly off my desk and put them in one of these. And it means I can see them, so I can see what the project is. I think that's one of my large sort of envelopes with various different interiors stacked and it's covered with collage. I can see what I've done. I use that for inspiration as well. There's another. And I also invariably have unfinished projects, so they also go in one of these. So I don't mind if I have an unfinished project and I don't want it sitting on the desk. Let's pick another. This looks like a rather full one. So if, if I'm in the mood for making some of my porthole pockets, so here's an example. They were a lot of fun. Again, I'll have it linked down below. I might have a number of these that are finished that I can use in my junk journal pages, but I'll also have batches of the component parts ready made. So I might have the book pages ready to tear up. I might have the, I'm going to make another mess here, aren't I? I might have the book pages already torn, but not yet glued. It looks like they've been folded in the right place. So I've kind of got prototypes ready but they're not cluttering my desk and I get them off. And they stack nice and neatly in boxes. Again, boxes just, I don't pay for them. I just keep things that come through the front door. And even if it's not a, a clear plastic one, I've got some of these that are a bit of a material. They work just as well. And I really like this system. So that's my wallet system. What I am going to do is clean the desk. I'll show you what to do. It gets a clean every week. Do you clean your desk every week? Let me know in a comment down below. And then what I'm going to do is show you how I set it up for a beautiful ambiance to make me happy when I craft and to be productive and efficient as well. So every week I take it back to this stage. Doesn't it feel good when it's empty like this? It's quite a big desk. I appreciate that. Okay, it's not empty. I've got my plants on it just here. I'll talk about those in a second. And I've got my twinkly lights, which I'll also mention in a second. What I do is I take a spray. This is lasting ages. I've given this a bit of a dust. I never thought I'd be cleaning on a video on YouTube. But who knew? And that gets a wipe. And you'll be amazed what you see when you do this, how many splats of paint there are on your desk. It makes it fresh and clean and smell lovely. And it also means you spot things like this. So I don't know if you, you do this. This is a very bad habit. If I have a bit of washi tape that I haven't used, I said this would be a revealing video. Very naughtily, I stick it on the side of the desk. So those have to come off at this point because my rule is I'm starting afresh. And it makes you feel really, really good when you've got get rid of that, a clean desk to start again. It helps the thought processes be more creative, or at least I think so too. Let me know down below when you last completely emptied your desk and gave it a clean. I mentioned using nearby surfaces to help you be efficient and I thought I would just share what sits to the right of my now clean and drying desk. So I have very close to hand, which helps some of the things that you've probably seen a fair bit of in the video. So I have my Arteza pencils in an upright container. Those are watercolour pencils and I prefer those. I get more impact from them on my journal pages. I have, you can see this stack of pens that I mentioned earlier. I have a selection of my favourite washi tapes. So these are my preferred 
washi tape. I like the ones with foil. I like this sort of vintage style. And I also have another container with some, some of those really narrow ones that I make quite a lot of use of. But what I've got on this nearby desk, and I'm very fortunate to have all of this surface area, is my things that I reach for not all the time, and I don't visually need to see them, so they're out of my eye, but I do want them ready to hand, and also they're quite awkward to put elsewhere. There's the little circles. Something I have a bit of a rule about is putting my glues back on this plate because they seem to get just distributed everywhere. So I have a couple of the thicker glues. In these I mix 50% a wood glue and 50% PVA. Maybe one of the Arteza PVAs can go in that. I typically have my erasers here and my stick glues. If I need to store a whole batch of glues then they go in a box on a shelf somewhere else. And this is, okay it is a bit of a mess but I know what's in it. So I have things like my corner rounder, I have my knife there, various scissors of different sizes and I've got some pegs. We used one of those earlier didn't we on the snippets. Got another peg here. So it's, it, it's busy but I know what's on this desk and that's one of my other tips. If you put things back in the same place, not only is it faster to put them away, but you won't have to think too much and use that creative energy for finding things when you want to reach for something specific. So step three is all about setting up good lighting on, above and around your desk. And I'm absolutely delighted to say that this part of the video is very kindly sponsored by Serious Readers. So Serious Readers produce amazing lights and they reached out to me and asked if I would be interested in testing one of their lights which is specifically aimed at helping the crafters like us who look for lighting which is very helpful for those close-up crafting tasks and and also for maybe crafting for a number of hours at a time. To be honest I decline a lot of offers of products to look at to play with because I just don't think they are right for me and my channel and for you. So I did some research and I very very happily said yes I would have a look at the light and this is it. It's a high definition table light. It's absolutely amazing and I will explain why but first let me just give you an offer code which also has some great benefits. The offer code is just on the screen down here and it is SR206 and this will get you a free compact light and that's valued at £150 with any purchase in this Sirius Lights range which includes high definition, the Alex light and the classic light. This offer code also amazingly includes free international shipping. So there are some colour choices to make when you choose your light and you can see that here I've got it's a slightly off-white with a nickel arm that just comes up here and this is the head but let's be honest what we really need is effective lighting that makes it easy to see and to craft sometimes for hours at a time. Now my desk here is in a corner I don't have the luxury of putting it at a window if I did put it at a window, obviously I'd have a much more natural daylight, which is what I really want to be able to see properly. But I think many of us crafters need to have shelves a bit like this. So yes, it's cluttered and busy and I need to sort that out too. But I am in a corner because I can then have stuff above my desk, not least of which is my camera that you can see there, my filming lights, some other lights that I've tried to put in to augment the lighting, but I haven't yet cracked that challenge of having really nice natural light to craft with, and that's exactly what this brings. So let me just show you how it works. It has a very solid base, and the on-off button is just under here. Let me show you that. So on, off. The camera may or may not pick up the differences in light. You can see it coming on and off there. You also have just behind here, and you might be able to see little dots of light come on. 
If I just move that up, you can change the strength of light, and this is what I really like about it. You can see what number you're on out of one to five, and I can dial that back down. And then, underneath here, I've got the ability to change how spread the light is on my project. Let's see if it can pick some of that up too. So what I'm doing, you can see a little bit, my camera will sort of negate the effect a bit because that's what it's told to do. But the key point that I would make from this is how natural the light is. So I'm going to put it into the corner over there at the back. It's got a very long lead, which is quite lucky. And I'm still going to have my twinkly lights on the desk because I love those as well and they make me feel happy and creative. So now we're at the fun bit where we can just pull some lovely supplies out and put them back on the desk. And I'm going to start by putting some basic tools in the same position on the desk each time. So what I do is I go back to that, let's just show you the area on the right, just here, and I pull out the key things that I know I'm going to want to use to create some of my pages. I often use a ruler. I want to do something with my watercolour pencils so they can actually go on. And I'm going to reach down and grab some pieces of paper. And the benefit of doing it this way is you don't use the same pieces of paper every time in the same patterns. So I'm going to pull some items from my shelf above so I have shown you this before, so I know it looks very messy. I have been filling them up actually. I think I'm going to want some birds in my pages. So I've got some ready cut out here, aren't they pretty? We love birds, don't they? Do you use birds a lot in your junk journal pages? And I'm always using my labels. So this is my tub of labels. So I think that can go on there. I tend to put those on the left hand side. Let's grab some papers as well and get those and they typically go on the left hand side here so I'll just get those. I've grabbed a few colourful papers from underneath the desk and I switched around things. I may not need the Christmas one but I do want to just use some different patterns and, and make good use of those. I think I'm going to have some inspiration on the desk so that's something I often do. What I like to do, I use this little corner here for some of my filled journals. And as I'm doing junk journal January, next, I'm going to just reach down and put some of these on my desk. And because it's been emptied, I've got space. A bit chunky these, aren't they? So they go on there. And what we've got in these is finished pages. I'm not going to copy them but what happens when I turn the pages is I just feel happy and creative so they're going to be on my desk as inspiration and the other thing I like to do is make it feel cosy by having my plants nearby. Now these are plastic there's no way that I'd have been able to keep these alive but I have these handy and I particularly like this sort of rose gold tub and a couple more things I'm going to have nearby the Junk Journal January information. So this is just the artwork that Meg Journal's created with all of our faces. So everybody who's involved in Junk Journal January collaboration, obviously as many of you as possible will be involved creating journal pages. And importantly, these are the prompts. So I've printed those out and I'll have them handy. What I'd also have handy on my desk for inspiration sometimes is my computer. So I just sit that to the left of me, sometimes here where these papers are, and I'll stack it on some books to bring it up so that it's eye level and that makes it really easy and pleasant to watch. Let's put my washi tape back on because that's definitely something I use a lot. If you'd like to make a junk journal and fill it with beautiful pages, then check out this video here and I hope to see you soon.